Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about PHP templates versus Blade templates. Well, PHP and Blade templates represent two distinct approaches to the web development, each with its own strength and trade-offs. Let's explore the complexities of PHP templates and simplicity of Blade templates to help you make an imp informed choice for your next project. Let's take a look at these two examples. On the left hand side, we have a PHP template. And as you can see that over here, we have an opening PHP tag, then closing PHP tag, again opening PHP tag, closing PHP tag, and so on and so forth. This makes writing code a little bit messy. You know, it looks very untidy. That every time you have to write PHP, you have to open a PHP tag and then close it. So when you're writing HTML and PHP together, it looks a bit uh, untidy, right? Now, on the other hand, let's say that you're using React. So in React, you have the JSX, and JSX makes things easier for you because you can write the HTML and JavaScript together uh, in the same file, and it's more readable. So on the right-hand side, we have the Blade, blade template, Laravel Blade template, and here, uh, as you can see that you have an if condition and inside that you can write the HTML and then you can use the escaping using the uh, curly braces and it just looks more neat over here. You have the for loops uh, that you can use using add for each, add end for each and loop through uh, a particular piece of code and uh, it just makes things simpler. You don't really have to open the PHP tag and close the PHP tag, you can just use these curly braces to uh, add a variable, which is which is really great, okay? Now, so what are the benefits of um, using the Laravel blade template uh, versus using a PHP template, right? So PHP template has its own complexity and challenges. They often require extensive use of opening and closing tags, making the code less readable and more error prone. Uh, on the other hand, the blade templates are more simpler, as I've just shown you uh, in the code example. Uh, secondly, the mixing logic and presentation uh, in the PHP templates can lead to like blurred separation between business logic and presentation. While in blade template, you have a clear separation. You can pass the props uh, from the component. If you're building components using the Laravel blade templates, you can easily pass the props, which I will show you in a moment. And and that has a separation between the business logic and presentation. So components are not really responsible for the business logic. Also, the lack of consistency in the PHP template, uh, because without standard structure, PHP templates can become chaotic and difficult to navigate, especially in the large scale applications. Now these are again some of the differences that we spoke about, like the control structure, escaping, readability. Uh, it has template inheritance, uh, which means you can use the add extends and add section to include templates. Uh, performance is better because uh, PHP directly renders the template. However, Blade compiles the PHP and caches it for performance. That's great. You have uh, logic separation, as we discussed. Uh, the PHP mixes business logic like loops and condition within HTML. However, the Blade directive has uh, more directive keeping the HTML cleaner. Uh, in PHP, you use include uh, function. And uh, in the Blade, you can use add include or you can use the components, which I will show you in a moment. And also, uh, PHP requires manual handling of cross-site scripting protection or using the functions. However, the Blade template automatically handles the output scaping. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. So let's say you're using a WordPress uh, PHP template. So here, as you can see, to include the parts, template parts like headers and sidebars, you have to use the get template part. On the other hand, in the Laravel Blade templates, you can actually create components uh, like the header and the, and the sidebar, and you can just include that using X header, X sidebar, X footer, and you can easily pass the props. Here, this just makes it a lot easier. You can just uh, pass the props like username is logged in. You can even pass the arrays. So all those benefits are included. And then again, you can use the add for each 
um, and uh, you can loop through uh, different pieces of code. So PHP templates can be suitable for smaller projects or legacy applications where a gradual migration is preferred while Blade templates is recommended for new projects or large scale application that prioritizes code organization, maintainability and performance. Okay, so how do we use the Laravel Blade into WordPress environment? Well, the good news is that uh, there is an open source plugin available called WordPress, WordPress Blade from Travelopia, uh, which you can just go ahead and install it and then you can start using the Laravel Blade into your WordPress project. So, how do we install it? Okay, so I've written a blog on this one on how to install and set up the WordPress Blade plugin. The first thing we'll do is we'll create a composer.json file into the root of the project. If you already have one, that's great, but if you don't, you can create it. Okay, and then we're going to paste this code over there. Okay, so what's happening here? Basically, we're just requiring this package, which is WordPress Blade. It is recommended that you use uh, the Composer to install this package. This can be installed using Composer. So you have that information, and then you have Composer installers, and then we allow the plugins using Composer installers, and then we also have a script that uh, I'll explain to you in some time. Uh, and then we're making sure that uh, the path where it's going to be installed is in the MU plugins because we don't want the editors to accidentally remove that plugin. That's why it's recommended that you place that inside of the MU plugins. And uh, if you check over here, uh, this is actually type is WordPress MU plugin, which is why we have specified that over here. Okay, so once that is done, then we'll just run the Composer install into the root of our project. So since I've already uh, installed the this package, so I don't have to install it again, but uh, in your case, it'll go ahead and install that for you. So it has created the vendor directory and it has installed the plugin inside of the MU plugins over here. As you can see, this is installed, okay? Next thing we're going to do is basically load it inside of our MU plugin. So you just have to create a loader.php in case you don't already have one. And then you just require the plugin.php, which is this file, uh, into your uh, loader.php. We just require that. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is require the autoload file from the vendor directory. So we need this autoload file in the vendor direct from the vendor directory to be included. So what we'll do is we'll go to WP config, and uh, we can go ahead and require that particular file so that the uh, files are auto-loaded. So we'll just say vendor, which is this path, and then autoload.php, which is uh, this file, basically. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is create components. Before we create components, of course, you need to have a theme. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use my own theme. Uh, so this theme is Aquila. As you can see, we've got 1,000 stars on this one, and uh, please extend your support by adding a star to Aquila as well as to the WordPress Blade um, repositories. And uh, you can go ahead and clone it and, and then use it. I have already done that, so I'll just show that to you. So let me just close these guys. Loader, close, close. And then inside of the themes, I've got Aquila. And um, inside of assets under source, I have created a components directory. You can place the components directory where it's suitable for your theme. And inside of components directory, we are going to create Laravel blade components. So, so the first thing we're going to do is we'll create a layout.blade.php because it's best to have a layout file so that we don't have to repeat ourselves. We don't have to repeat the headers and footers. Wherever you're going to include the layout file is automatically going to be including the headers and the footers layout.blade.php, and then I'm gonna remove the PHP tag because this is a Laravel blade file, and paste that. So we have the get header, get footer, which is the WordPress functions, and then we have a slot, so whatever content you're going to put is gonna be inserted here, and um, it's going to be escaped. Um, then we're going to create a bootstrap file, which will use our layout component, so let's create a bootstrap, boot, strap dot 
blade.php as your bootstrap file and of course we have to create the hello uh, component also which I've already included here so let's create a hello component okay so this hello component is going to accept a prop that's going to be passed from outside the component as I'd explained to you earlier that a component uh, can be as dumb as possible uh, because there is separation of concern. We don't put the business logic here. Uh, it just accepts the the props. Uh, whatever props, props you're going to pass, the component is going to render that content for you or behave that way. Okay. So in this case, we're going to pass the slot and then we're going to pass the name. And uh, that is being passed to that component from here in the bootstrap. We're passing the name. And in place of slot, we are using hi there. So that's going to be rendered here and the name will be rendered here. Okay. Then we need to include this uh, bootstrap file for that. All we have to do is just create a PHP template. So inside of the theme root directory, we can just create a template PHP template. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just uh, naming this as Laravel blade.php for the example purposes. And then inside of that, uh, we just give it a template name. You can name it whatever you want and then just uh, basically load the view, which is asset source components, which is this bootstrap blade.php. So bootstrap blade.php is going to be included here. And inside of that, the layout will be included, which is having the header and the footer. And in, inside of the slot, you're going to have the hello and uh, that will contain the name and the content here. Okay. Once that is done, then we also need to add the uh, config file. So we call it blade.config.php. This will go inside of the root of your project. Blade config. So this is basically the configuration of where the so here we specify the path to the views. So where is a, where are views located? So we are, our views are located inside of WP content, which is this, and then themes, and then equalize the name of the theme, and then under assets and the source. Okay. And then we also have components. So we include that as well. So we have specified the path. So it's going to output the, uh, it's going to pick up the blade files from here. Now, where is it going to be compiled to? Okay, so it's going to be compiled to the build folder. So wherever your build folder is, you specify that path. So in my case, my build folder is this. I'm using Webpack to build the other things like CSS and JS, but this configuration is responsible for uh, compiling the blade. Okay, nothing to do with the Webpack. Uh, this is going to be using whatever directory you're going to specify. So in my case, it's build and then it's going to be blade. Okay, so that's what I've specified for um, expiration of the cache, whether true or false, the base path and all these things. So you mention all of that. Once that is done, then you go to the WordPress, just create a new page and inside of the page, you can select the template. So it's my Laravel template, which is this. So that's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to publish that. I'm going to go to the front end. Now, once you go to the front end, as you can see, you've got hi there, hello Jane. And uh, if you inspect, please ignore the styles because right now this is just an example to show you how it's going to work. So if you go to the source components, so it's loading the bootstrap, it's getting the layout header and the footer. Uh, and then over here, this is the hello.blade.php that is being loaded and we've pass the name inside of that. So that's why you have this hello chain. And then inside of the H1, you have the slot. So here we are actually passing. Hi there. Okay. That's why you're getting that there. Now under the build directory, as you can see that it has compiled only all, all of these files. This one is hello dot blade dot PHP. This is compiled. So layout.blade.php, this is the compilation version of that. Uh, and this one is the bootstrap.blade.php. That's a compiled version of that. Okay. Now, uh, for the production build, you just need to 
run this command composer exec wordpress played so that was the script that i had added over here if you remember in the composer json we have the script wordpress played and that's the script we need to basically run uh, composer exec wordpress played config file uh, blade config.php and uh, it's on the terminal and it's going to compile the production version of the blade files all right awesome so that's how you can use the uh, laravel blade uh, plugin uh, to make things easier for you to simplify and then you can reuse these components it just makes your life a lot easier and this is so much readable compared to opening and closing the php tags and these components are just way way simpler all right so i hope you did like it uh, if you did please uh, give star to this repository wordpress blade uh, to extend your support and uh, if you have any questions you can leave it in the comments and if you have any issues you can also add it here awesome thank you very much bye bye